Thank you for joining us today for worship on December the 6th, 2020. This is St. Nicholas Day. We're so glad to have you at St. Thomas Lutheran Church in Bloomington, Indiana. I'm Pastor Adrian Meyer. Just a few announcements. Today at four o'clock is our St. Nicholas Day party. You can find the link to join us on our website and our Facebook page and in the newsletter and bulletins that came out this week. Uh, we hope that you can join us. There are craft kits available outside the east door uh, at St. Thomas, so please be sure to pick one of those up. We should be having a really great time this afternoon at four o'clock. It is Advent and we have two opportunities for midweek worship. The first is a noon prayer on Zoom. Uh, the link for that's in the bulletin and on our website. And at seven o'clock, we have our midweek worship, which will be here on YouTube. Uh, Christmas Eve is coming. It's Thursday, December 24th, and we'll have three opportunities for worship on that evening. The first is at four o'clock. There'll be a children's outdoor worship service. This is for kids and their families, and of course, anybody who is young at heart. Uh, we'll be putting up a Christmas tree together, and for ornaments, we'll be using things that keep people warm. Hats, socks, scarves, mittens, those sorts of things. So please bring something to share. We'll bless our tree. We'll sing some carols. Please wear a mask and plan to be socially distanced, but that will be 4 o'clock on Christmas Eve. At 8 o'clock will be our big festival of lessons and carols. Uh, so far, it's shaping up to be a wonderful service full of beautiful music, uh, hearing the stories from the Bible, um, and I hope that you can be a part of it. That'll be at 8 o'clock on YouTube on Christmas Eve. At 10 o'clock, live from the Myers, we will uh, have a blessing of our nativity set and a time of kind of quiet carols. That'll be at 10 o'clock on Facebook. You don't have to belong to Facebook to see that, and the link for our Facebook page is in the weekly, it's on our website, uh, and we hope that you'll join us. On all those places, there's a link for our serve sale. Serve is handcrafted fair trade items, um, and the proceeds of the, those items will go to benefit our relationship with Sister Parish. So be sure that you uh, take a look at the sale. There's some free shipping going on right now, so please be sure to check that out. Finally, thank you to everyone who gives to support this ministry. We cannot do this without you. The link to give is below uh, this video. It's also on our, our, um, in our bulletin and on our website. Thank you. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Almighty and merciful God, you call, you call us, us to wait, wait to, to watch, watch, and, and to pray. pray. But, but we confess, confess that we have grown weary and irritated. We confess that we have lost hope. 
Without hope, we ignore our neighbors and calls for justice and peace fall silent. Forgive us and grant us wisdom to seek the things that will endure until Christ comes again in glory. Amen. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven and all things are made new. Rejoice in this good news. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the
Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to the city that it has served its term, that its penalty is paid, that it has received from the Lord's hand double for all its sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, with an arm to rule. God comes bearing the reward, preceded by the recompense. The Lord will feed the chosen flock like a shepherd. God's arm will gather the lambs. God's bosom will carry them. The Lord will gently lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant pr prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. The second lesson is from 2 Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow concerning the promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all of these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of person ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for the hastening, the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens, and a new earth, with righteousness, is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by God at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. 
Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by John in the river Jordan while confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. John proclaimed, There is one more powerful than I coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The nonprofit Vitamin Angels, which works to end global malnutrition, commissioned a survey ahead of Giving Tuesday, you know, like the year end nonprofit fundraising kickoff. And uh, they commissioned this study. They asked 2,000 people how they were coping with the COVID 19 pandemic. And nearly everyone they surveyed said that the bad news of this year, the pandemic and the election and murder hornets and like the whole kit and caboodle had taken its toll on them. But at the same time, nearly everyone that they surveyed said that they were trying to do something positive each day to make somebody smile or to count their blessing. And I was interested that the headline for this study said, good news wanted. Indeed, right? We all want good news this year. And it's interesting that today's gospel from Mark claims to begin some good news, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But what's also interesting is where Mark's gospel says the good news begins. It says the good news begins in the wilderness. Now, in ancient times, in, in, in the ancient world, heralds would come to town to announce victory, to say, you know, this victorious king or general is coming and pronounce the good news of the battle they'd won. The entire town would go outside, out to the city gates, to welcome the victors home. Mark's gospel begins with that kind of good news. Good news, or news that's good enough to bring all of Jerusalem out to see it. This is the Jerusalem that had been occupied by Rome for decades. And so it leaves us to wonder, like, what kind of message would bring all the people out of Jerusalem? What is it that John said that they all came to hear? Surely it had to be a message of hope that John, dressed like the prophets of old, was telling them to get ready for. Get your priorities straight, he said. Turn around. Believe that the good news is on its way. But I have to wonder, why the wilderness? Why does the good news have to begin in the wilderness? I mean, the wilderness is like this place of utter dependency. There's no 7-Eleven in the wilderness. There's no Motel 8 with the life left, light left on for you. There's no fields to glean from. Your money's no good here. What there is to eat, you eat. Where there is a place to lay your head, you sleep. The wilderness is a place where everything is stripped away. 
I tried in writing this to find some way to wax poetic about the wildernesses in our lives, but I just, I just don't have it in me. The pandemic is a wilderness. Virtual work and school and worship, wilderness. Grief and mental illness and social injustice, wilderness. The wilderness forces us to do like some kind of triage on our lives. What's the most important? What do we really value? What matters to our lives? And according to Mark, this is exactly where the good news comes. And on the one hand, I just, I guess it shouldn't surprise us, right? God has a history of beating God's people in the wilderness. Abraham, Jacob, Hagar, the Israelites fleeing from slavery, Elijah, Elisha. The wilderness is where everything is stripped from us, not as some kind of punishment, but in order that we might see God in order that everything that's taken from us might be the baggage that keeps us from God. What is taken from us are all the lives that we somehow have it all handled, that we can climb the mountain to see God on our own accord. To this end, in her poem, The Birth of Love, Madeline Langle wrote, to learn to love is to be stripped of all love until you are holy without love. Because until you have gone naked and afraid into this cold, dark place where all love is taken from you, you will not know that you are holy within love. There's an old story about a man who came upon a boy who was whittling. And the man asked the boy, what are you making? And the boy said, a bird. And the man says, how is it that you know how to do this? And the boy said, it's easy really. You just take away everything that is not the bird. This is what the wilderness will do to us. It will take from us anything and everything that would keep us from flourishing in the kingdom of God. It will take from us anything and everything that will keep our neighbor from flourishing in the kingdom of God. Advent is a wilderness. Thomas Merton once said, Advent is the beginning of the end of all that is in us that is not Christ. The good news assures us that God comes for us where we are, as we are. But this is not enough. The good news also asks us to go out into the wilderness and repent. To turn from our anger and greed, our pride and arrogance, our laziness, our lust and hunger for that which is not ours. Beloved, we are in the wilderness now. We hunger for good news. The challenge will be not to settle for our average run-of-the-mill good news, the news that will make us feel good for a moment, but the real good news, the capital G, capital N good news, that is something else entirely. The real good news is what sets us free. The real good news is not easily described. It takes Mark like 16 chapters to do it, eight of which are about the arrest, sham trial, torture, and murder of Jesus. In Mark's account of the good news, John, whose words of hope brought all of Jerusalem out to see him, he will also be murdered. But for 2,000 plus years, we have said that these words are good news. These words set us free. All week I've been musing on this quote by the Christian writer G.K. Chesterton, which says, Good news, but if you ask me what it is, I know not. It is a track of feet in the snow. It is a lantern showing a path. It is a door set open. Beloved, I'm, I'm really not sure where this leaves us. Should I instruct us on the work of repentance? Can I utter a word of hope that will sustain you through whatever is to come? Is any of that enough? Maybe this is it. Maybe it will be enough for us to simply begin by waking up to the wilderness that we find ourselves in and the work that is being done in us for the sake of the kingdom of God. So beloved, throughout the coming week, when you notice discomfort, the pang of loneliness, the frustration of talking while on mute on Zoom, the concern about whether the kids will be all right, the sour stomach of reading the newspaper, the unrest deep inside about the injustice of the world, 
when you notice this kind of discomfort, pay attention. Something is being stripped away from you that is not Christ. A hardened heart, a misplaced self-reliance, a false hope. As you watch it go, look within yourself for what remains. Has a space been hollowed out in you where the Christ child may be laid? Amen. the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, 
judgment and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us towards a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even the disparities between your people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who may grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression. And gather all people in your healing embrace. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Eternal God, give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, you comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new, in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. 
do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Our Father Father in heaven, hallowed hallowed be your your name. name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come. your Your will will be done done on earth earth as in heaven. heaven. Give Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God, for whom we wait, in this meal you give us a foretaste of the feast of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.